we welcome everyone, but we especially, I welcome all the churches and all the leaders and all the pastors, apostles and prophets in uh, Ghana, Africa, and other parts of the world. Welcome. And we are thankful that we're getting ready to have a celebration anniversary coming up this month. And praise God, we're working out how that I can be their speaker while still here in the States. Amen. They're bringing all of their churches in from all of the regions. And we are going to have a anointed time. Praise God. You and I are getting ready to get some word. You ready? Amen. Amen. Praise God. You got your Bible? Amen. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 55 this morning. And I want to exhort you from the word. I'm going to start a series of teaching the month of July. And I'm going to be teaching on understanding the ways of God. Understanding the ways of God. Now, there's a lot that I can say as we go back from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from the New Testament to the Old. We look at the prophets. We look at the the psalmist. We look at the revelation that God gave through many of his leaders, those that were touched by God. But as I was given this word, understanding the ways of God, and I want you to get that down. I want you to get it in your spirit because you and I are getting ready to go on the journey of understanding the ways of God. And I, I want to tell you before I start here in Isaiah 55, I want to tell you that if you are still open to, un, to learning about God, this will be a phenomenal series of teaching for you. One of the first things that God spoke to me when he gave me this, he asked me the question, are you open to receive further revelation from me or are you already satisfied or only open to what you have learned previously? The only people that it will not benefit is those that think that they already know what the ways of God are exactly. I'm not saying that you don't know something about it, but I'm saying that if you're closed and you won't go any further than what you know right now, then you're going to be very, very, very on the outside of the teaching. I'm teaching people that want to go farther in their understanding of God's ways, of who he is. You know, it is amazing that after so many years of being in the kingdom, that I'm desiring to learn more about God now than I ever have before. For example, I knew that there was more about creation than what I had learned previously. So I went on a journey to learn from the word of God. I started over in Genesis. And I started reading it. And then the Lord spoke to me one day and he said, he said, it pleases me that you're after more wisdom and knowledge. 
He said, so I'm going to let you see some things that you have not seen previously. So in the book of Genesis concerning creation, I began to grasp a revelation that I hadn't heard preached in the kingdom or in the churches. Matter of fact, I doubted some of the word I was hearing because I never heard it before. I understood something about that. Many people hear from God. They doubt what they hear because nobody else has said it. Amen. Nobody else Amen. has told them. So I understood something about the learning curve of where people are. People receive more from what somebody else has received by revelation and passed down to them. And then they pass it down to somebody else. You need to go back and look at everything you believe. And you need to go on a journey of finding out where did that come from? Who is behind it? In everything that you have learned previously, I'm going to challenge you, if you'll do that, if you'll go back and look at everything, I will assure you, you will learn more about what you are searching for than you ever have before. Because here's one of the principles of God's ways. You need to get it down, first of all, because you're going to be hearing it several times. God blesses the seeker. God blesses the seeker. The one that keeps on seeking, God blesses them. For he that has, more shall be given to him. He that already has, but he doesn't stop going after more of God, shall receive more than he already had. That's one of the principles of knowing God's ways. The reason that I'm giving you this is because I need you to understand you're going to be hearing some things that you haven't heard before. Where did they come from? They didn't come from the study of someone else's revelation. They came from seeking to know God for what he reveals from him to me. Because God blesses the seeker. Now, I can't, I can't tell you how true that is. The moment, let me try this one. The moment you stop seeking God, you stop growing in God because God blesses the seeker. Now, what the enemy has to do, he has to tell you things like this. You already know about that. You don't need any more teaching on that. Cut that off because you've already mastered that. No one has mastered anything. As long as you are in this earth age where you are right now, you have the ability to learn more about God 
than you ever have before. When does it stop? It doesn't stop for the seeker because God blesses the seeker. He that hath ears, let him hear what God says to the church. Now, he's not talking about your natural ears. He's talking about the ears of your spiritual understanding. God says, if you open the ears of your spiritual understanding, he'll give you more revelation, more knowledge. So I periodically go on journeys in order to know more about God. I seek him every day in some way. Isaiah 55. We're talking about, and I'm going to be teaching, understanding what? The ways of God. I want it to know, and I want it to understand some of the things about God in the Bible that are difficult to grasp. And matter of fact, when you try to explain them to people that don't know God, they get as confused as you are. For example, how do you explain to someone that God made a world called creation, planted a garden called Eden, put a man and a woman in the garden, put a commandment that they must obey that he already knew that they weren't going to obey it. He already knew it. You say, well, no, he didn't. Well, then, if God did not know that Adam and Eve were not going to fail him, disobey him, then you cannot teach me that God is omnipotent. That's right. Simply meaning all-knowing. Is God all-knowing or is he not? Do you believe he is all-knowing? You do. You believe that. Then you know, if you believe that, that God knew that Adam and Eve were going to disobey him. Then why did he, with all the stakes that was on that obedience, why did he, if he knew they were going to disobey, if he knew that they were going to fail him, then why did he give them that temptation to begin with? And why didn't he? Tell them to be on the lookout for a shining one, glowing one, beautiful one, who would seek entrance to their dwelling place called Satan, the adversary. I wanted to know also, in studying the ways of God, and you and I are going to open up this book right here, 
sitting in your hand. I wanted to know also if Moses was the author of the first five books like I had been taught all my life. And I had been taught that Moses was the author of what is called very many times the law or is called the Torah, the combined teachings of the law. I wanted to know something. How did he get Genesis? If he's a writer of it. He wasn't born yet. Who recorded it for him? So that he would be able to write it. Who painfully put all of the scriptures together so that he would be able to go forth and create a historical rendition of how creation started. He wasn't born. He wasn't alive. Where'd he get it? If he did, in fact, write it. Who this teaching will not benefit? I'll go there first. It will not benefit those that think they already know and have mastered the word of God. It will not benefit those who don't want to go any further with God. Matter of fact, could very well be that you're satisfied in what you already know. If you're satisfied in what you already know, you will want to catch the other ministers when they preach because this one will not benefit you unless you're still hungry and unless you're still thirsty to know more about God. I want answers. You know, you know the only people that get answers are the people who ask questions. Most people who are in the, in the church, they don't want answers. They are not looking for answers. So they don't ask questions. Well, I'm not made of that caliber. And I noticed something about my makeup. God made me to where I'm not satisfied ever with where I am in seeking after him. Never. I, it's, it's not somebody say, well, I'm satisfied with where I am. I'm not. I want to know him more. And I want to know some things in this book called the Bible that I have questioned for years. But what I did was, <laughs> I did what you did. I wrote off the questions and just said, let's just flow with it. I don't know it. I haven't met anybody who knows it. So therefore, let's leave that alone. For example, I wanted to know from God just how the angels were said to be able to have sexual relationships with women on the earth. I wanted to know how that could happen if all of the angels are invisible. How would you see them? How, well, the glory of the Lord came down. The glory of the Lord came down for them to be disobedient because they had been charged to not touch the women of men. So how did they sin? 
Can angels appear in human form? Is it possible for them? Well, I'm going to Isaiah 55. If you're hungry, you're going to be, you're not just going to be fed knowledge. You're going to grow sitting in the congregation and you're going to achieve a place in God that you never have hid before. Now, I have not mastered knowing God. I want to start off by making that clear. I have not mastered about knowing God, but I do believe in my heart that I know more about God than the majority of people that I meet. I do believe that. I do believe that God has showed me things about this book that we hold that others are fearful to accept, but God has helped me to grow in knowledge, in understanding, because I'm bold enough to believe it. You have to have courage and you have to have boldness to be able to believe some of the things you read in this book. Because it doesn't make sense. Oh, y'all, y'all are gonna play that one on me like, well, well, I'm a. It, you can't make me believe that all of this book makes sense. You cannot to to tell me that you you would be making me out to be stupid. Uh, 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 a lot of things you read in this in this book called your Bible does not make human possible sense. Doesn't make sense to me how that a woman could be impregnated by the Spirit of God conceive and bring forth a Savior that had no human blood in him. Had no human blood in him. But yet he was a human. How, 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 how could that be? How could, how, uh, uh, these, Brother Jerry, you're, you're going in the areas that we don't need to talk about. Why? Why don't we need to talk about them? It, it could it be that people do not want to talk about them because they don't know anything about it? Or could it be that if people become seekers, that they lose themselves from the spirit of control that has been adopted in religion. Could it be if you become a seeker that you start finding things out about God that they do not teach in your churches or preach in your pulpits? And all of a sudden you got questions. And God ready, is ready to give you answers. Who's thirsty? Who's hungry? Who's after more? Oh, you're in the right place. I'm an old warrior for God. I'm not afraid to teach things you'll never hear anywhere else. I've already taught y'all things that you have never heard anywhere in your life. And when you try to explain it to somebody who was a Christian, they told you, you better get out of that church because you're in a cult. Yes, sir. And why did they tell you that? Because, that's right, there were absence of understanding 
and they never heard me even teach what they tell you that is totally false. They heard you tell them. They didn't hear me. Cause if they had came and sat and listened to me, I believe the Holy Spirit would have changed. So you ready? What am I teaching on? Understanding the ways of God. In this teaching also, I will be talking about understanding God's plan for your life. Understanding God's purpose for your life. I'll be teaching along some of those lines. Hold everyone that thirsted, verse 1. Come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye, buy, and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So I'm going to, I'm going to get what I need for the necessities of my life without natural things. So I'm getting ready to be introduced to a chapter that is full of spiritual revelation. Hallelujah. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me. And eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now how many of you have that everlasting covenant? So how many of you would say even though he's talking to those that are recipients of the mercy that David received as well, he's talking to me right now in 2024. I am a recipient of the everlasting covenant. So I am saved forever. Now, 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 I know a lot of people don't believe they are. And I don't have any problem with people who believe that you can be saved one day, lost the next day, saved one day, and lost the next day. I don't have any problem with you believing that. I just have a problem when you try to make me believe that. Because I have an everlasting covenant. I do. You ought to be able to say you do. You're not saved temporarily. You're not saved for 40 years and then lose your salvation. You have an everlasting covenant. You're saved forever. You're saved now. You'll be saved then. And you'll be saved after then. Wait a minute. I better do it this way. Those that believe that, have a, that you have an everlasting covenant, I want to talk to you. The covenant cannot be destroyed. If you really have it. Well, Brother Jerry, I know some people that, 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 that have been saved and then they backslid and they died. Now, you, you tell me what you thought happened. But if they had a covenant with God, it's called everlasting. I have an over, everlasting covenant with God. Chapter is going to start talking to me. Behold, I have 
given him for a witness to the people, a leader, and commanded a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto you because of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Six, read it out loud with me. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Now, my first principle comes out of verse 6. Now, I want you to hear this. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Principle number one. There are times in your life when you will feel like God is near. And there are other times in your life while it will seem like heaven is silent. Both of those are from God. Not one of those, but both of those. When people tell me they hear from God all the time, then I know without telling them that they are lying. Because there are times that God will conceal himself from you in order to make you more of a seeker. Seek him while he may be found. There's going to be times in your life while God seems like he's sitting right beside you. And there's going to be other times when you think screaming, hollering, jumping, running, dancing, hollering, and you still are getting nowhere. Okay. I wanted to understand a principle, and I got it. I want to understand why there are times in my life that God seems very near. And then there are other times in my life that God seems far away. They don't talk about it at church. They don't talk about it at their fellowships. They don't talk about it when they are talking about all the things they're hearing God say. Why is it? Because they have a limited understanding of the ways of God. I began to understand something about God, and it is this. God will never allow me to get so comfortable with him that I stop seeking him. That's hard to hear in it because you've been telling everybody, praise God, I have the presence of God on me every day. I don't believe you. No, I don't believe you. And I don't believe you're just trying to be deceptive. I just believe that you think it's good to say in order to impress people. If you were true, if you were really, really sincere you would tell me there are times that I have his presence on me greater than I ever have had before. And then there are times that it seems like heaven has closed the door. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to say this. I'm going to preach it because you gave it to me and you told me to come and preach it. Now, I knew when we got on this, this journey, I knew that part one should have been easy to entertain. 
but I'm getting a resistance. So let me go back and do what you told me to do. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a resistance. All right. You're going to grow in God for real. Pretense is over with. Matter of fact, you are going to stop trying to impress people when you get this revelation. You're going to be secure in who you are in Christ. And you're not going to have to be coddled, puffed up, put on a pedestal in order to make people think that man, she finally has arrived. Hallelujah. Your walk with God is going to blossom. You're going to know him in a way you never have before. Why? Why is it? It's because the days that you were actually pretending that you were high in the spirit, you know that actually you felt nothing. There were some times like that. I, get, I, I gotta get me a, a couple of honest people. There were some times like that in my life. I, I, I didn't say I feel that way all the time, but I've hit them. Verse six, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. What a word. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Get real with God and mercy will meet you. Get real with God and he will abundantly pardon you. That means that a pardon means he will remove the bondage that's on you and set you totally free. Pardon people don't stay in jail. They get out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So when God pardons you in your spiritual walk, it's like chains that come off you. Shackles come off you. For my thoughts, God is now going to speak to the prophet. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Can I read that again? You believe that scripture? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. I don't think like you. Is that what God's saying? There's a difference between the way we think. You say, but I have the mind of Christ, so my thoughts are like God's thoughts. Okay, we're going to find out how far that's got you in actuality because now the mind of Christ is going to come alive in you. You know what amazes me? It amazes me. I'm going to read the rest. Don't worry. It amazes me that you would try to make me believe that you never feel. Well, you got to cast down feeling. I understand that. I'm with you. But it amazes me that you would tell me, someone who's walked this for years, that you have never had a feeling or a thought that you are far away from God. It amazes me that you would think that I'm stupid enough to believe that. If the truth was known, you're telling me that you had more, you have more relationship than Jesus did. Well, Jesus always knew that 
that he and, he and God was close all the time. What about in the Garden of Gethsemane? What about in the times when he was facing his hardest temptation and he cried out to God, you know, if it be possible. Now, this is the reason I came. I know you designed this, but if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And he didn't do it once. He did it three times. Because he knew that in that time he was getting ready to go into a place he had never gone before. Oh! God's thoughts are not like your natural thoughts. And God's ways are not like your ways. See, you act sometimes in a way that I don't think that's God. Uh, I don't uh, don't know, but I don't believe you acting like God right now. Oh, buddy boy. Now, I know you can snap out of it any time, but are you acting like God right now? When I got to this scripture... God, God spoke to him and he said, you want to understand my thoughts? I said, Lord, look at my heart right now. This is what I told him. I said, look at my heart right now. And you tell me, do I really want to understand your thoughts? Do I really want to understand your ways? I said, tell me. Because if I have anything in me that doesn't want to understand you better. Take that out of me. Break me in two so that I will cry out to you in truth in Jesus' name. See, you can do, you can do that when it's just you and God because you don't have to impress people. I'm on fire today. Praise God. You know that you're not, you haven't been on fire, but you get on fire once you park your car in the parking lot of the church. You get on fire. Uh, this is the day. This is the day. Rest of the time you have been in self. You have been in your own feelings. You have been in your own attitudes. And now you drive up into the church parking lot, get ready, get out of your car, and you put on a facade because somebody might be looking. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways and Isaiah helped us to understood who spoke that. Who spoke that? The Lord. The Lord. Yahweh. Almighty God. He spoke it. Is that right? Yes. For as the heavens. Now, I need to understand something about the ways of God. And I'm getting ready. He's getting ready to give me revelation in verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. I don't think like you and my ways are higher than where you are. Now, Here's where I backed up and I said, I'm going to read that again. Heaven is higher than earth. The heavenly realm is higher than the earthly realm. The heavenly thoughts that God has are higher than my earthly thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. He's not coming down. I, I, I know... 
Well, I, we got a lot of things in Christianity that we say that we, we, we don't even stop to think about what we said. I know that God sends his spirit down to talk to me. But for the most part, God's ways are higher than my ways. In order for me to understand the ways of God, principle number two, I must enter a new realm place. That's what that realm would be. I must enter a new realm in God because I'll never understand the ways of God with a earth-bound consciousness. You know how I can prove it? You entered into a, another realm in order to get saved. Do you know that? Three of y'all know that? The rest of y'all say, well, how did I? I was still here on the earth. No, no. Let me tell you what happened. When you got saved, you believed something. It took you from where you were to another place. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, our creation. All things have done something. And behold, all things are new. That's another realm in God. You're in a new place. Glory to God. And you thought that you were still earthly bound. You've been ascending into the heavens yes, for years now. Yes, You've been tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And people marvel who tell you, I'm a Christian too, about how excited you are in God when they have no fire at all. And you're not trying to impress them. Praise God, you're just on fire. Glory to God. You love the Lord. Yeah, I, I really love him, but I don't want to make no noise. I don't want to say nothing. Well, wait a minute. For us the rain coming down and the snow from heaven and return it not thither, but water the earth and make it it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now God says, I'm going to show you how to move out of that earth consciousness. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word, my next principle, takes you out of the earth realm and gives you heavenly realm understanding. You believe scripture that other people read and never believe. That's right. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, empty, without producing results. But it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. Get this principle. In order for me to benefit from the word 
that God sends. I have to receive his word by faith. I have to believe it. You with me? If I teach you on healing, it don't, it don't help you until you believe it. I teach you on financial prosperity. doesn't help you. Brother Jerry, I came and praise God, I listened and I heard and I didn't prosper one time. What's wrong with your teaching? Nothing. You got a belief problem. If you believe it, it will prosper where to God sends it. Now I got it. I got it. I'm gonna see. Can I go there? I've I've grown a lot to know. Okay, I, I I'm gonna do it because one I can't get to where I want to go slowly. I have to go ahead and I have to do what we said, we say a lot of time in the pulpit. I have to get ahead of myself. See, I, I, I can't stay back. I, I have to give you this. I know when I hear a word that heaven has sent me. Oh, well, let me try it this way. I know when a word is preached. If heaven sent it for me. And now, now, understand something. I didn't say it wouldn't send for somebody. I said, I know when a word was sent for me. When a word is preached or a word, uh, I'll give you a, 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 a principle of this. Somebody one day, I ain't going to tell y'all where I was, gave a prophecy. Thus said the Lord. Okay? And they prophesied, and they prophesied, and they prophesied, and it went on for about 15 minutes. And some of the people were, praise God, I received that, praise God. But I knew that that word that was being spoken wasn't for me. I didn't get mad about it. I was happy about who it was sent for. But I knew it wasn't for me. And then after the service, somebody came up to me and said, Man, praise God, Brother Jerry. And they said it wrong. They said, I know that you received that word that God sent. And... And I, and I looked at them, and they said, you did receive. I said, I don't really want to talk about that. I said, did you receive it? Yeah. Enjoy it. Rejoice in it. What's my principle? Everything that is sent from heaven doesn't mean it was sent for you. Did y'all get that? That's going to free you from pretending and from from lying. Uh, oh, God, God. Yeah, now, no, no, wait a minute. Everything that is sent doesn't mean that it's sent for me. And you know what it else means? Because that wasn't sent for me. I'm not going to put it down who can receive it but I'm not going to lie on the Holy Spirit because me lying could stop the next word that is sent for me. Well I might as well. I ain't got but two verses more to preach unless unless this audience can come up higher with me and go farther. 
if they can't come up higher and go farther, then I'm not going to do like most preachers do. I'm not going to wire myself out right. preaching to unreceptive hearts. If I get somebody who's ready to go up, I got some more scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 when God talks about what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. There are some things that are concealed from some and revealed to others. Why is it that people that grew up with you in the same church with you, under the same preaching with you, and heard the same things you heard, what is it about them that they have not grown whatsoever? Well, you, those that receive the word, you shall go out with joy, verse 12, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Creation will work with you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come upon the fir tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name. You mean... A name will be released from God for you for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Okay, let me, let me, let me try this. I'm going to hit you with something. is it that God uh, has done some things that uh, over the years go to Psalm 25. Over the years it cannot be explained. How is it? To my audience that is online today, I exhort you to come up higher than where you have been in order for God to take you, listen to this, further than where you have been. He'll take you up higher in order to take you further. Yeah. It's kind of like this. The Africans have a saying when they're talking about having a spiritual father. They really are high on that. They say, no father no further. You can only grow farther by having a spiritual father. Now, because I'm getting ready to dismiss you, not that I don't want you to receive all this revelation, but I'm getting ready to close out this teaching because I'm going somewhere else with Honey Rock today. Now, I pray God's blessings be upon you richly in Jesus' name. Amen.